All right, hi there. Welcome to Northern California. Before I give away and reveal the location of where I'm at, let's start with a pop quiz. Let's see if you uh, know your rock types a little bit. Let's start with this rock here. Hopefully pretty easy one. It's black, very glassy, sharp. So we've got that rock there. That's rock number one. And our second rock is right here. Uh, kind of a grayish color. Has a lot of holes in it. And as I pick it up, it's exceptionally light in weight. This rock just does not weigh a lot uh, in terms of its sheer mass. So how'd you do? You got your quiz uh, questions answered there? Yeah, you probably got this one right. The first rock was obsidian. So that's this rock here. Uh, the second rock was pumice. And what's interesting about these two rocks is I think to most people, they seem really different. You've got a dense, glassy, uh, shiny rock. And then you've got this rock just riddled with holes, gas bubbles in it, uh, that's exceptionally lightweight. The color on pumice varies a little bit. It can be uh, more almost white. It can be beige. This one's a little bit kind of light gray or medium gray in color. Uh, obsidian's typically black, but it can have a little bit of variation in, in color as well. But the big reveal here is that these two rocks are essentially the same. They are both composed of volcanic glass. Uh, unordered elements that did not have um, the time to create respectable crystals that would form minerals. So they lack true minerals. Uh, they're just made out of unordered elements. But the difference is that, that this is a gas-rich form of volcanic gas. And so these two rocks are essentially the same. And this location I'm at here, I hope to show you that in a little bit more detail. We're at a place here in Northern California uh, on the near the summit of Medicine Lake Volcano. This is a place called Glass Mountain, an entire uh, expanse of this type of rock exposed here. And to illustrate the really intricate relationship between the obsidian and the pumice, we're gonna take a little scramble up here and look at how these two are interrelated. So we're here at the Medicine Lake Volcano, which is sits a little bit east of the true Cascade Range. And so it's a bit of an anomalous volcano. It doesn't behave or even look much like your classic um, stratovolcano like you'd see in the Cascades, like nearby Mount Shasta. Uh, and it erupts a whole host of rock types. Um, under my feet here, aside from all the, the glassy rocks we're going to look at here, um, some of these older rocks lying around are basalts and scoria from mafic eruptions. So basalts had erupted here at some point. So the Medicine Lake Volcano uh, is massive in terms of its pure volume, but it looks really different than some of the other Cascade volcanoes. It's probably closest neighbor in terms of similarity would be Newberry Volcano up in Central Oregon, which is another bit of an anomaly where it sits partly along the uh, near the Cascades, but it's partially influenced as well by extension from the basin and range. So let's go ahead and head up here. Forgot to introduce myself, geology professor Sean Wilsey. Uh, let's take a little hike up here. Hopefully things don't get too screwy, but what I want to show is the intricate nature that the obsidian and the pumice are related along with just how how these things form. So this big steep uh, lobe here that we're, we're hiking up this little cliff is actually part of a lava flow. These rocks all came out as lavas. Now initially when Glass Mountain erupted there may have been a uh, explosive phase where it threw out some uh, a little bit of pumice and ash. In fact, over here in the road cut, the light colored material sitting on the older reddish basalt is little pieces of pumice. So there was an initial sort of vent clearing phase that blew a lot of gas rich uh, magma out, but then it basically oozed out this thick, pasty lava. And I want you to think of this as being a bit like um, toothpaste in a way. Here's a good example of how how intimately connected these two rock types are. So here's a nice little band of pure obsidian, glassy uh, lava, and then it's sandwiched in 
amongst all this pumice here, this more uh, gas-rich material. There's another spot over here where you've got the glassy um, area with no gas bubbles. And then you've got this more vesicular rich uh, gas bubble material here, the pumice. So the pumice and the obsidian just forming these, these intricate relationships. And here you might even be able to see some of the folding going on here. So as this lava just oozes out like taffy, thick paste, uh, it actually folds over on itself and forms a real interesting variety of shapes and forms. And I think if we head up this way, we'll probably see some really amazing sort of full geometries and relationships in this material. There may be places in here as well where the uh, there was proper crystallization of this lava that formed rhyolite, but for the most part, everything I've seen here is mostly this mixture of obsidian and pumice. Oh, here's a great spot here. So if we get in here, you can just see how crazy the folding is as these, these thick pasty lavas just roll over the top of themselves uh, and form these just insane little fold geometries in here. We've got one here where it's folding back on itself, another one here, and then again areas where it's very glassy, uh, pure obsidian, and then areas where it's more frothy where it's a little more gas rich. And so that would be more like pumice in there. Uh, great, great folding in there. There's even places where, and we can see if we can find these a little better, where, where the pumice can get stretched a little bit and become almost needle-like in terms of its uh, consistency. You might be able to see that maybe back in this hole, or even right here, on this underside here, we can see some of these pieces of pumice. The gas bubbles have been stretched so much uh, that they're forming little needles. Let's see if we can find another spot. Let's head up this way. I think I saw a couple more up here. So it's difficult to work around this stuff. Um, Obviously, being up at this high elevation, uh, we're probably at 8,000 or so feet. Um, there's a lot of freeze-thaw cycles, so a lot of the material gets broken up, shattered. Another nice little fold pattern here. Um, just a really fun place to explore and just look at all the amazing shapes and features. A little bit of the sun coming out. Here's a nice place where you might be able to see some of the pumice being stretched out. So it's just like taffy. These gas bubbles are in the lava, but as the lava is flowing and moving, these bubbles get stretched out and elongated. And in general, you can pick out the two mainly on color with the darker material being the obsidian, the more glassy material, and the lighter stuff being the, oops, the pumice. Just another awesome little fold package here. Uh, just this obsidian is just so, so smooth, at least right here. Obviously you wanna be careful when it, when it creates an edge. Even back down in this hole, there's some really amazing folds where it kind of, flows over on itself. And I think the toothpaste analogy for me has always been uh, the most helpful one where it just kind of bends over and folds on itself. Um, if you just squeeze a tube of toothpaste in one place and watch it just roll over on itself, I think that's a pretty good analogy. Um, let's look at one more. Some more down here. So one down here. Oh wow, here's some right at my feet. Uh, you can see some of the great folding of the lava and then on this little wall here another good spot right there 
it's just kind of everywhere. I mean, this is just the nature of it. These flows don't flow very far. I believe the vent for this uh, specific flow is about a mile away. And these are, uh, maybe I didn't give the age, this, this unit here is about 950 years old. So this erupted out of the ground less than a thousand years ago. Pretty remarkable. So, looks like a big jumbled pile of rocks to the casual observer. Um, but much more interesting than that, this cool relationship between the obsidian uh, and the pumice here at Glass Mountain on the flanks of Medicine Lake Volcano. Thanks for joining me again, Sean Wilsey, geology professor. Appreciate all you can do to share, like, subscribe, promote the channel, try to get these, this uh, geologic educational material to as many people as we can. If you'd like to donate, there's the thanks button uh, down and to the right of the viewer there. There's also um, a donate button on the banner of my homepage. And underneath every video description, there's a PayPal link as well. So thanks for joining me here from a kind of foggy morning on Glass Mountain, part of the Medicine Lake volcano in Northern California.